Hey, what's up everybody? It's Rox and I am coming to you today with the review for Cutting It in the ATL Season 1, Episode 4. So, I'm on my way to work. And I had time this morning to uh, do a video before I even get started today. Okay, so I figured I'd get this out the way early. Did you watch the show last night? We do have a lot to talk about today, so let's just get to it, shall we? Ooh, the sun is bright. Okay, so the thing about this show I've noticed is that they really only show one dimension of the girls. And I know that happens a lot on reality shows. But on this show, I think it really, really makes them seem like they are only one way. So it kind of makes it hard for you to really like all of them. Like, for instance, Maya, I know she's about her business. And um, she is all about her business. The show makes her seem like she's only, only about her business. I'm sure she has other things in her life. Now, that might be what her, her angle is because if she's only about her business for real, she wants to make sure that she keeps it in everybody's mind that she has this $50 weave store and that she sells pretty hair. Now, if I didn't know nothing else, I know she sell pretty hair, you know, hair extensions. So... In that sense, it's doing its job, but it makes her seem like she's only, only focused on trying to get these girls to go into business with her. So, speaking of Maya, when she was talking to her girlfriends at her house at the very beginning of the show, I'm going to give a special shout out to my girl, Nataki. Star Taki. She does my hair every two weeks. She is a wonderful, wonderful girl. She's the girl that had the hat on. She's been doing my hair for um, probably about seven eight years I have been going to her she didn't she's never done she was not my weave girl she's my long I mean my short hair girl but real sweet person you guys I just love Natalia to death I've always been very consistent always been very just cool and chill and you know she you could tell she was chill even on the show yesterday I was like Taki you gonna say something and Taki was sitting there like bitch you ain't fixing to get me up here saying nothing that's gonna come back to bite me in the ass so I don't blame you girl but yeah it was it was uh it was really good to see Taki on there. Then let's talk about Mushia. So Mushia, again, when I say they feel like it's one dimension, you know, she's at her her store, her salon, and um, she is trying out new stylists to maybe work in her in her salon, the damn salon. And she's really, really extremely hard on exactly what she wants. Like she's focused. She knows what she wants her hairstylist to do and how they should braid and all of that but damn it's just like <laughs> dang Mashia she was just like um you're supposed to be from Africa what the fuck is this I am very disappointed that somebody from Africa from my home is uh you know show, showing that they can't even put a fucking decent ass braid in so I don't know I, I just really wonder if Mushia is truly like that like I get the impression that she probably you know I told you guys before that I feel like she is uh, what is the word? <laughs> Y'all know I can't never remember. She, um, uh, doesn't really mince any words, so she doesn't know how to kind of soften the blow a little bit, you know, just kind of says it, and, um, I know a lot of people like that, and I actually have some African girlfriends who are very much like that, so I don't know if it's a cultural thing or what, but, yeah, she ain't got time to be fucking around or trying to make you feel better, okay? This is what it is. This is what she's going to say. How are you guys feeling about Maya and Mushia? I still feel like they are my favorites off of the show. Now, let's talk about Miss Beauty. First of all, we get Beauty talking to her, her husband. I was just like, uh, I was wondering when they was going to get the gay guy best friend on the show. You know, that's all they do out here in Atlanta. It's such a stereotype, you guys. I mean, there's a lot of gay men out here. But I promise you, every girl that's all done up and on the scene is not running around with a best gay guy friend that I just you know so I but anyway she's talking to him she's gossiping with him she's telling him about the fight that she had with Deidre up in um Macon Beauty's whole thing is she don't like Deidre she feels like Deidre is below her she's not on her level that kind of talk bothers me you know because it reminds me of people that are snobs and uh it really bothers me when you have really no reason to be a snob <laughs> like it's one thing if you got that shit going on so tough that you know you you really probably are above <laughs> some people but just the fact that your attitude is so fucking nasty that people don't like you but when you really i mean 
I don't know, you guys. Maybe Beauty does have it going on like that. I can't really see it on the show. Just from me looking at her, I wouldn't think that she was just all that the bomb and everything. So when people say that you're below me, I just, I just don't like that kind of talk. So that shit, again, makes me feel like Beauty is all this, you know, she thinks she's just something spectacular and then let's get to Deidre and uh, you know her sitting down and talking to her aunt and um, you know the conversation that they had evidently this is the aunt that raised her she doesn't have a relationship with her mother her mother had her when she was 16 years old and I guess semi abandoned her or hasn't really been in the picture so you know when she was talking to the aunt and she was just telling the aunt like how it's really hard to get along with these girls and you know she's wondering if it has anything to do with the fact that she doesn't have a relationship with her mom is that a reason why she can't seem to get along with no damn body else no other woman I mean, remember i told you guys that last week I, I just something about women that have problems with their mother just can't seem to get shit together with other women it's like a trust factor is not there and it's sort of like this barricade or this cover to protect themselves from being hurt by another woman so <laughs> break my psychology books out on that ass today but anyway again the one dimension i know i keep on it um mentioning this but you know deidre it seems like her character you know arc or whatever it is is that she's can't get along with women so with all that being said <laughs> let's get to this um outing at boogaloo now boogaloo i promise you every single reality show black reality show in atlanta i guess everybody fucking goes to boogaloo i guess boogaloo was like y'all come on down here you got all this room to fight and do whatever you gotta do and it's all good because they, boogaloo has been on love and hip-hop atlanta i believe it's been on real housewives of atlanta and now we got this show so boogaloo is making this little coins they was all sitting down at that table i it was almost like they were trying to get into the scene it still feels like they all have to get used to being around the camera and everything Maya's whole thing is I'm just trying to get everybody to act like fucking adults let's just act like we've got some fucking sense and that we have some decorum and that we have some home training and that we're grown-ass women all who have businesses let's let's act that way while well, they're sitting at the table and um you know when Maya tries to start it and was just like okay beauty so when you were talking at the other at, at the uh event and making and beauty was like well why is this all about me okay this ain't gonna be about me don't sit up here and be like i'm the only one that does something so i was just like okay we already know beauty is the turn up master she's going on and on and miles just like i'm just trying to tell you that yes you were kind of the one that was starting the shit well beauty wasn't willing to take that um rap and so beauty in order to try to get it off of her she's like well the only person at this table that really has to should have something to say is the one that's being quiet okay she's talking about Deidre Deidre's is sitting over there and still Deidre didn't really take the bait when beauty said that Mushia was like look I can't sit up here with these bitches and all this fussing and carrying on all goddamn night so what we gonna do here is we gonna put a 50 second limit on what the hell your problem is and once you get to 51 bitch i'm done <laughs> i was cracking up when she said so they're like okay well let's go around the table one two three go so la kenya said something first i don't even know what la kenya said i didn't even really pay attention to what she said but whatever she said that was that okay and then deidre goes next and deidre was like i don't have a problem with anybody at this table i love all of you guys well we all know that that's being facetious and that would kind of get on my nerves too because if we're trying to get to some sort of solution bitch when it's clear that you don't love everybody at this table you've had arguments with pretty much everybody the only person that you have kind of resolved everything with was maya you know i love everybody well you know mushia caught that immediately was like bitch you don't even know me don't sit up here and say that you love me because we've had our problems okay so you really not really trying to even do what we're supposed to be doing at this table so to speak deidre was just like oh you know what mushia i can't even understand the words that's coming out your mouth like do you speak of the english and i was like oh this is so not right she says why don't you go back to straight back to africa calling her a zulu queen and all that i said okay okay first of all none of that was even really necessary i feel like she took it way over the top yes again i get it when you be in an argument with somebody that you know you just say shit i've said that plenty of times i 
don't even think the argument was at that level for her to get so fucking offensive. It wasn't like shit had then got to this this feverish pitch and then you just start throwing shit out. It was just they were talking and all of a sudden Deidre took it to this next level saying shit, you know, that she was a Zulu queen and that she needed to go straight to Africa and all of this. Mushia didn't, you know, I guess probably because Mushia is from Africa and she's in the United States and she's probably heard people say these type of things to her before. So, you know, Mushia was just like, you know, whatever, bitch. Whatever you say is fixing the slide right off this back. Not paying attention to you and your foolishness. This is what I meant about Deidre. When I say that she says things and not conscious about what she says, like she, her whole thing is, I don't care. If you say something to me, then I'm gonna come for you. Well, the problem is, is you're on a reality show and you are trying to get people to support you or trying to get, to gain a fan base. Well, it's always going to be some people that's going to be in her corner. The, the biggest part of it is you are making yourself so unlikable. Nobody knows anything about you. It's not like we've known, we've grown to like you and then you've done some shit that's kind of pissed us off. No, you starting off with people not liking you. It's so hard to dig yourself out of that type of hole. Since I've been doing this for four years and watching these reality shows, like you, you cannot start your, yourself out this way and hope for a really good outcome. So Deidre is making the shit hard for herself, making it hard for herself. So I was just sitting there looking like, girl, you is fucking up. <laughs> okay, so anyway, they start arguing. She's arguing back and forth with Mushia. That kind of gets settled down a little tiny bit. Beauty gets to talking. She says that, you know, here we go again with the she having a problem with the damn, um, La Kenya leaving her salon and you know owing her the hundred dollars and not saying anything and all of this so once she got started <laughs> with that Deidre was like look you know what I'm so sick of hearing about this hundred dollars you so worried about the fucking hundred dollars she takes a hundred dollars out of her purse and throws it and it hits beauty in the face you guys <laughs> I thought about um ATL remember when um T.I. threw that money at big boy he was like you disrespect motherfucker you done hit me in my goddamn mouth for some money <laughs> I was just like, uh-oh. Of course, Beauty, you know, she tried to act like she was going to calm herself down. And honey, I guess she called herself reaching over Maya to hit that damn um, Deidre, honey. And that bitch Deidre, now, she might be a, you know, old dirty talking bra. But that bitch had them hands that night, okay? That bitch, as soon as Beauty breached over there, honey, Deidre got that arm, pulled her over towards her, honey, got a hold of that head. And girl, when I tell you, that bitch must have pulled and yanked her and pulled her around. And girl, she was sweet it and pull it <laughs> I was cracking up and me and Miss Maya okay Maya was like oh no oh no you know she was just like wait a minute wait a minute she was trying to break the shit up I said Maya girl you needed to get the fuck out the way but I guess she didn't have much of a choice because she was sitting in between the two of um you know between beauty and and uh, Deidre. Just when they all got the fighting and tussling and shit and Maya was in the middle and they all went down. <laughs> I was cracking up. She was so fucking pissed when security finally got them all broke apart and you know Deidre was like, I told you I'm not the one. I am not the one bitch. You is not the one. <laughs> Ain't nobody trying to get no fucking tussle with that goddamn Deidre. I know that. <laughs> Ooh, that shit was funny as fuck. I rewound that so many damn times. I was just like, well at least she can bet that shit up okay kind of reminded me of when uh malaysia remember when malaysia beat laura uh govan's ass on that first episode of basketball wise la i'm telling you that shit was the funniest fucking fight because <laughs> that laura didn't know what hit her when she was done that bitch was sitting over there on the side she was looking like it was fanning herself with some paper like bitch that <laughs> i did not know that bitch was gonna do it they got them apart you know and <laughs> Beauty tried to save face by going back and sitting down with my um with Mushi and Mushi was just like, honey, you should never let somebody take you there. Okay, you should not have done that. Beauty was like, well, what does she think I was? She think I'm a prostitute? You gonna just throw money in my face like that, girl? You was talking so much about that damn money, okay? In the meantime, Maya was like, are you fucking kidding me? What she really wanted to say was like, you put me on this fucking show. You said it wasn't going to be no bullshit like this, okay? You guys, security sitting your ass right over there. And your ass do not come over here and break up this fucking fight in time and got me up here tussling and shit in my cute little outfit. I done fucked up my toe. I can just imagine the shit that she was saying, so. That fight, I'll tell you, that fight was funny as fuck to me. I had a good, good laugh off of that.
that. And then when LaKenya, because LaKenya is younger and everything, and, you know, she was just so upset because she's kind of feeling like the reason why Beauty and Deidre are fighting is over her, which they are, which is even stupider because you care that much? What the fuck are you fight? You know, Deidre is like super protective of LaKenya for whatever reason. I guess because LaKenya has been there for her. But I kind of feel like she's just kind of taking LaKenya on as a case because she wants to have a problem with Beauty. And then Beauty, you know, I just, oh, I don't even know. Okay, when she tried to, to talk to LaKenya and LaKenya was just like, you know, I just want us to, you know, it's silly for us to be fighting. Like, you know, we need to just be able to be cordial to each other. And Beauty was just like, well, I just want you to be careful around Deidre because I don't want you to get hurt. Okay, now it's you don't want her to get hurt. Just a few minutes ago, you had a fucking problem with the bitch leaving your damn salon. And now it's, you you know, you so concerned for her safety and being around Deidre and all of that. Um, and then, of course, after the fight, you know, and they were all just individually talking to their friends and telling them what happened um you know maya was avoiding beauty's call because maya is just sort of like oh, i can't even be around women like this i don't know women like this and i was like girl i know what you mean because i don't know women like this either i mean you know me and my girlfriends may have a disagreement every now and then but bitch it ain't never ever got to this point yeah you ain't know so you know so she is just like i didn't got on this fucking show with these old hood ass bitches like no i, ain't, I can't be putting myself out there and i got a goddamn business okay i'm trying to do this and these bitches up here fighting and boogaloo over some fucking hundred dollars no so you know deidre when deidre talks to um Kenya, deidre doesn't really see anything wrong with what she did her whole thing is you know what i just told you as a matter of fact i wrote down exactly what her ass said because i thought that shit was funny as fuck she said hold on you guys i'm not the one who likes to start stuff but i most definitely will finish it honey we'll wrap it up in a box and put a bow on it <laughs> <laughs> bitch you sure enough did that beauty is feeling regretful for what she did it's always like that after the fact you know once people start fighting on these shows it's like damn i didn't jump ship i am fully immersed in this reality show demon like i'm showing out i'm doing shit that i normally wouldn't do it's like it's almost like i was like the little reality show demon man get up on your shoulder and just be having you do all kind of shit okay so you can tell beauty felt like she shouldn't have did it she was telling her sister about it and her sister was just like what i think they was getting their nails done i was like can somebody get the sister's hair done <laughs> shit but uh yeah that was pretty much it and then at the very end when maya is out at a restaurant you know at a bar having a drink and Mushia is there with a couple of her friends she sees Maya and uh you know she goes over to talk to her and <laughs> Mushia uh just lays it on Miss Maya that you know Beauty sent a spy over to her salon to see how good her services were Maya didn't like that and she she felt like you know that was some old shady ass shit which it was kind of messy of you Miss Mushia to tell her about it but then she was just like you know fuck it. I, <laughs> I ain't got time to be around no bitches that's doing all this sneaky ass shit if I know about it then I'm gonna tell it you know and it's out in the open <laughs> now you can talk about it so <laughs> I just love Bushia. She's funny to me. And she's a she's a good like icebreaker for the show because all the rest of them is just, it's just so much cattiness and all of this shit. It's really just Deidre and Beauty. And really it's just beauty. Deidre just doesn't quite have the um the how she should react under control. So y'all. But yeah, that shit was interesting. It was entertaining to me last night. I was just like, well, finally. I didn't finally realize that I love me a good ratchet ass fight, okay? And that was a good ass fight. That shit was a good as when um bambi busted that erica pinkett and <laughs> remember when she hit erica pinkett and that bitch was like boop 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 that camera was right there okay the same with that fight honey we saw that whole thing and when maya and them all went back i was cracking the fuck <laughs> how y'all feeling about the show is it getting a little bit better for you all right you guys let me get the hell on up off of here get to work actually gonna run and get me something to eat first and then get to work anyway you guys make sure that you rate comment and subscribe to the channel i'm it's rocks <laughs> the channel is for rocks put some damn makeup on just looking flicked a little bit um <clears throat> and everything else i do will be in the bottom bar all right all right so i hope that you have a wonderful wonderful rest of your day and i plan on doing the same until next time rock stars bye